Next, we're going to talk a little bit more about views. So here's what we're going to be covering. We will talk about how to embed views inside of other views. Uh, particularly, we're going to talk about how to inject views using different ways to do that with find and inject. We're also going to learn about a very important uh, layout called border pane as well as views life cycle. So we understand exactly what happens when few views are out of the pictures. And when we enter, I will show a new view and so forth. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and created a new project, I named it views app. And I did all the configurations that I've shown you before. So I added configurations if you want to, so that we have this run app uh, with the logo of tornado FX. not necessary, but I always like to do that. So we are going to be learning about how to add other views inside of our main view. So this is going to be a good demonstration of the power of tornado FX. First of all, we're going to change this H box to a border pane. Now, if you're not familiar with a border pane layout, it's a really handy layout because it allows us to have a layout that is the fullest, if you will. So we have a layout that allows us to put things to the top, at the bottom, middle, left, and right. Let's let's start playing with that real quick here. So let's change this to border uh, layout or pane, I should say, as such. Very good. Now everything is going to still look the same. We're going to get rid of all of that uh, so we can do other things for here. So you notice that, uh, like I said, for border layout, we have top, bottom, center, left, and we have right. So because we inside of a border pane layout, we can in the initializer block initializer here, we can just say for instance, top, we're going to start with that. And let's put a label inside here, that would say something like top, okay, do the same thing. I can say bottom, I'm going to say center, say center as such, and put a label, let's say center, let's say bottom, there it is, put another label here, and I would say bottom, say left, and right. Right, very good. So save this and see what's going to happen. I'm going to run. And well, I can see there's top, there's right, there's center, there's bottom and left. Obviously, inside of each parts of our border pane, so top, center, bottom, left and right, we can add inside of them other embed other views, right. So in this case, we have a controller here. So I can put another layout here, for instance, I can say HB, okay, or VB, V box like that. And I can go ahead, of course, and put the top inside of VB and do the same everywhere. Okay. As you can see, as simple as this look, this gives us a very nice layout where we can start placing things uh, when we create bigger applications that actually do more. I okay, just wanted to show you real quick the things you can do with a border pane. Now, let's say we actually want to create separate views. So what we can do is obviously we can go to our views and create a new file here. Uh, in fact, it gives us the possibility of creating a tornado FX view which is exactly what we want, because it just adds the type and so forth top view as such. And just like that, it creates a class top view, which extends the view class, which is what exactly what we want. And the title, I'm going to just call this top view and gives us a border pane. Now we can obviously get this inside of our main view at the top here, whatever we want by injecting it. For now, instead of border pane, I'm going to just save and inside of this H box, I'm going to create a label, very simple, save my view. And then I'm going to create I can create a few buttons here. So I can say button one is going to click, say menu like that. And button two, I can say file. So in this case, here, we have our top view, and we want to be able to invoke it or inject inside of our main view, there's a few different ways to embed views, I'm going to show you the first one. So let me go ahead and get rid of this, this syntax. So for the top, I can say top, if I want to get or add this top view to be shown inside of this main view, I still go say top like that. And this will allow me to pass the type that I'm going to be passing here. So what is the view the type I'm going to be passing for our top in our border pane here? Well, I just say top view like that. Okay, let's save this and run and see what's going to happen. 
And just like that, you can see there is my view and we have our file there. Now you get idea. So we have there my view, menu and file, which is exactly what we have for top view, right? We have an H box horizontal view, which will have a label button. And of course, another button. Now if you want, we can also position this. So say alignment, I'm going to say pose, I want it to be in the center in the middle top center there. Let's run this real quick. And you can see now it moved the entire view at the top center there. And of course, if I want it, we can also go and say spacing that and give it about 16.0 has to be a double. And voila, you can see there's very nice spacing there. So as you can see here, we have embedded a top view inside of this main view. Okay. What I want you to do before the next video is I want you to do the same thing we did here. So I created a top view and I added a few elements inside and I embedded that inside of our main view. I want you to do that with center or bottom. Go ahead and be creative and do that. Very well. So what we would do is go to view. I'm going to create a bottom one. It's tornado effects view there. Call this bottom view. There we go. And instead of a border pane, I'm just I can also just pass a control such as label. Okay, so we have our photo label there. So we can pass that as well. And back to our main uh, inside of our bottom here, we can just get rid of all of that. And just pass our bottom view like this. And we can see it says footer at the bottom there. You can see now we have this amazing flexibility of embedding views inside of other views, in this case inside of our main view. Now, this doesn't stop here. Obviously, we could create a chain of views inside of other views that also works, although I don't think that is actually helpful in the wrong run. But you get the idea of things that you can do. Sometimes, uh, like they say, with great power comes greater responsibility. So that is the case here. <laughs> because we have this capability of embedding views on top of views, that doesn't mean we uh, should embed more than three levels or four and so forth. Okay, so just use this sparingly, if you will. Very good. So this is one way of embedding views. Now there is indeed other ways to do so by using inject, uh, which we've seen before, and by also using find. Let's start with the inject because we've seen that. Now what is this inject? Inject is a delegate which will lazily assign a given component to a property. So the first time that component is called, uh, it's going to be when it will be retrieved as well. Okay, so how do we do that? First of all, in this case here, I'm going to comment this out for a second here. And what we will need to do at the top of the class as a property, we're going to say something like val top view like this is going to be equal to top view. And we'll say by inject like that. Okay, very good. So now we have a way of accessing our top view lazily. So now inside of our root here, all we have to do is just say for instance, top like that, and we can just assign it to something. Well, we're going to assign it to top view. But we have to go and get the root of that top view to in order for us to be able to add to our top element inside our border pane. Now let's take a look again what's happening here. So if I say top view, notice we're going to have an issue. If you hover over, it's going to say required a node and found top view. What this means is that, well, even though the top view as we have here, it is indeed a type of a view. But it's not until we go to the root that we know this is indeed a node that is attached to our scene graph, if you will. That's the reason why we must say dot root, which you will notice it's also an H box. Okay, there we go. If I save this and give it a quick run here, you'll notice the same thing that we saw before happening, meaning we'll be able to see our top view showing there. I'm going to say this is creating a lazy reference to top View. That is also a way for creating these views in a more integral ways. Next, we can also do the same, but now explicitly retrieve a top view using find. Okay, so notice here we are using the inject, and next we can use find. How do we do find? Well, let's look at center for instance. So I'm going to create another 
class view called center view let's say tornado fx it's called the center view like such and border pane that's totally fine and let's create a button that will say center button like this very good and back down here to main instead of having all of that i'm going to just get rid of all of this and before we even go further we need to do something here so i'm going to say val at the top center and then i'm going to say is equal to find i can use the find method which will then say okay what is they're trying to find but i don't have to even specify the type because i can pass just inside here the class that i'm looking for in this case it's going to be center view and it's a class type okay just like that so now i can actually point that to our center so i'm going to say the same thing is equal to center view and of course i need to go and get the root so we're not seeing anything here because in our border pane we didn't specify exactly where we want this to happen now in this case i just want to say center like this put all of that in the center that way it's gonna just show in the middle we could have put anywhere else we want notice uh this is probably a little bit complicated because we have this embedded view which has a border pane which is being put inside of a border pane so that's a little bit of overkill but i just want to show you how this can work not necessarily an ideal way but it's possible that you may need to do something like that and voila you can see now we have that center bottom center button showing up there now we've learned how to embed views uh, the first one we learned was by inject Okay. And the second one was by using explicitly going and finding the actual class, which then we pass on to our view. Both ways, it's totally fine, but you will see most of the times we're going to be using by inject because there are a lot of advantages to using inject because of it being able to lazily uh, invoke or create those views on top of other views and so forth. So go ahead and play around with this concept. Now let's go ahead and, and look at the, some of the time. internal override methods we can use in any of the views or any of the UI components that we create. So as a view goes from the beginning to the end, meaning uh, the time that users are able to see it, such as when we click run and we are seeing things, and to the time where we click out of it and we destroy the object. Or do we destroy the view? So there's a lot of things that do happen. One of the things that I love about our IDE here, our IntelliJ, I'm sure other IDEs have this capability, but I just enjoy um, this particular IDE, is that if you say Command N like this, right, and go to, you can go to Override Methods or Implement Methods. Let's go to Override Methods, right, which will pertain to our main view here because it inherits from view class if you hit enter there's a lot of things that show up here so these is the tornado fx ui components these are pretty much all of the methods and properties that we can invoke or and or override now let's pay attention to all these methods okay notice we have this undock or on undock this on tab selected on save refresh and many many others now some of these are not going to be necessarily useful if you are inside of a generic view such as this on tab selected this would work if you have tabs obviously okay on refresh as well and many others but these on dock on create or on before show and on undock these can be used inside of any view such as this let's start with the undock let's select it and there we go so what we're going to do i'm just going to go ahead and print something very simple i'm going to say like that and i can also start by just typing if i say dock like this notice i can just go hit enter and there we go i'm going to go ahead and say print dock very good what else do we want Let's go back to our override methods there's on before show on create let's look at this let's let go on create i'm gonna say print on create very good on show before show there it is i'm gonna just go ahead and call this print before show very good 
I'm going to open our debug here so we can start seeing hopefully things that will happen. So I'm going to run. Let's keep our eyes right here. Look at that. It went says before show, right even before this showed, we saw that this before show is what's run. And the moment that we are able to actually see our view, it's called the dock. When I go, when I went ahead and call the dock here, which is on dock really. Okay. So this tells us a lot of things because now it gives us an idea of things that happen as we run the application. In this case, we can now understand exactly when, for instance, do we prepare assets if our app needs some sort of assets. And we also know to understand, okay, by when exactly do we have to have those assets or anything that we need to prepare for before our view is on dock, meaning users are able to interact with our view. Does that make sense? So now we know that any code that we need to run after everything is prepared, obviously is going to be on dock. So the moment on dock is called, that means that's when everything is set up, the view, the tree, uh, the children, everything is set up in the view uh, and ready to go. Okay. Now before show, obviously it's going to be whatever preparation we need to do before anything is shown such as creating all its assets and fetching anything that we need to do to prepare for on dock. Now, what happens if we click out of it? Look at that. It goes ahead and called the undock. So whenever we remove the view from our tree, in this case, we exit out of it, it calls the undock to terminate the entire application.